Russia's new patriotic AI is really bizarre. In November of 2022, Russia officially banned ChatGPT, the AI that shook the world because, well, Russia was quote-unquote concerned with disinformation and criminal use. Sort of ironic. But in April of 2022, Russia, or to be precise, Russia's biggest governmental bank, Sberbank, has created its own version of ChatGPT called GigaChat. Yes, guys, I'm not joking. That is the actual name of the AI text bot. And they also launched their own AI art thing, like stable diffusion and majority type stuff called Kandinsky. And the whole point essentially was that ChatGPT and all these AI systems developed in the West could potentially harm Russia. And that is why we need to create our own patriotic AI. And it all seemed to be doing great until one of the most you. prominent politicians in Russia, the leader of the Russian parliamentary fake opposition party Just Russia for Truth, Sergei Mironov, came out with a statement saying that this AI and the pictures that this AI produces are not patriotic enough and actually evoke certain bad feelings about Russia. And therefore, this AI should be dealt with and he literally reported the company's Burbank to the Russian authorities saying that essentially it needs to get banned right now. <laughs> Oh, isn't this just so beautiful? Hello, Blazers. It is your boy, Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi, guys, doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be discussing uh, Russia's patriotic AI project. Tipo, jie neturi šansų sukurti AI, tipo, ta, nu, kaip čia GPT, ne? Turi visų pirma sušerti jam domenų. Tiesiog sugrūžti gerklę domenų AI daug labai, kad išmoktų, žinai, pamokas. Bet ką tu sugrūsi? Tavo rusiškam internete tik tais informacija ar tada visų interneto visokių įvairių svetainių? Bet tada bus nepatriotinis. O jeigu sugrūsi rusišką informaciją, tada bus tiesiog viška propagandos košmaras, tipo... Tai aš nežinau, kaip jie ever galėtų padaryti kažkokį normalų AI. Project and how Russia itself is trying to destroy it. And uh, <laughs> I just want to make fun of Russian boomers in general. So let's do that. Especially when the boomers we're talking about are people who have been actively... Ah, jie pasiemi tiesiog čia GPT AI ir perdina savo homepage, dėl kai tokių visų. Ir tada, ką, jie tada jį jau redaguoja, kad, nu, ir jį moko, kad labai būtų rusiškas. Ten tada jau cenzuruoja, kur prireikia ir panašiai, bet tipo, nu, kaip atšaka daro nuo to projekto. Ruined my country for the past 20 years, so... Now the thing is, all of these shenanigans with Russian AI is a story that I think is very characteristic of modern Russia and what it's like, but yet again, this is one of those stories that is very underreported in the West. For example, usually to keep up with my news, I like to use Ground News, which is actually the website... Ground News! Ground News! Ground News! Which actually is truthful, or to the link down and subscribe. And let's get back into it. Okay, so look guys, here's the thing. Uh, like I said, I want to make fun of Russian boomers in this video because you guys gotta understand that Russia is a country that is largely governed by very, very old people that basically don't know anything about anything. They don't know what the internet is. They don't know what technology is. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and here's the thing. You can maybe say that this is actually adorable in some regards, you know? And not only slimy politicians, but basically the average Russian boomer is pretty much just like this. I mean, <laughs> I just want you guys to watch a video, okay? I got recommended this YouTube short, which has almost 30 million views. Wow and one million likes called Double of Vladimir Putin in the Army. Let's just watch the video and uh, I'll make my points afterwards. <laughs> Vladimir Vladimirovich, why do you eat the 83rd Brigade with the soldiers better than you can? You know, Sergei. I haven't had a discussion about this question. In general, if you take only the 83rd Brigade, one of the two, right? то мы не возьмем все воздушно-десантные войска в целом. Long story short, if you have like three brain cells, it's pretty obvious what this is. First of all, this is actually the original video. And you can see here, it's just some guy in the army in Russia doing like an impression of Putin. And he's actually doing a pretty well good impression as far as like, you know, the facial movements and the voice and everything. And this video right here is a deep fake of Putin's real face added to it, right? So to pretty much anybody who's ever been on the internet, it's pretty obvious that this is like not what this guy's face like really looks like, right? There's surely no way that somebody would actually fall for this and think that like there's a real person that walks around looking like this. Well, guys. <laughs> Let's look in the comments. How is it possible to be so similar not only with his face but with his voice? He's so cute. This guy is funny as hell. He's so similar. He looks similar the way he speaks and the way he acts. I wish him all the best. <laughs> You just know when somebody types like this, this is like some grandma that just logged out of fucking admaklasniki.ru. <laughs> he looks like 
looks exactly the same and his voice is great. Give this man an Academy Awards. Wow, he looks so alike. Show this guy to Vladimir Vladimirovich. He needs to check this out. <laughs> A young talented guy. This is a wonder of nature. He looks incredibly similar. And like basically oh, the God. point is every single comment right here is the same. Literally thousands or millions of people think that there's a person like out there. <laughs> That looks like Putin walking around in the army somewhere in Russia. Look, I don't know. When I'm looking at this stuff, I'm kind of losing hope for humanity. And like, I actually do realize how fucking... Dabar technically, actually, nieko negalime tikėti. Jokiam tik tokia. Tas jokutis trigerina biškai mane smarkiai, jo jokas trigerina, bet yra kaip yra. Bet, by the way, viskai nieko dabar jau kurį laiką. Nu, mes tą kartojom, kad negalės pasitikėti nieko. Ką matai ten TikTok, Instagram, YouTube šortas ir panašiai ten negalėsi pasitikėti. Ir mes tą sakydavom, tipo, į ateitį tarsi, bet dabar actually taip yra. Jau, jau yra absurdiškai gerų deepfake'ų, jeigu labai nori padaryti, kur tu net nesuprasi, čia deepfake'as ar ne, ir supranti, nes dabar for the most part, tu matai kaip juoko forma, kažkokį humorą ir supranti iš kontekstų, ai, čia fake'as. Bet realiai jau pra, ta, taip ge, tokių gerų jau gali padaryti, kad dabar jau sunku iš vis pasitikėti be linka. Jė... Yeah and dumb people are. And here's the thing, right? This basically plays into my greater point about how boomers don't understand technology and it's actually what we're gonna be talking about in this video. But here's what I want to say. All of these people, uh, like they're actually fully convinced by this. There's no doubt in their mind even for a second that this might be a deep fake. I'm pretty sure that most of the people who commented this stuff don't even know what a deep fake is. So, you know, we're basically going into Metal Gear Solid 2 territory here, you know? Now you don't know what's fake and what's real. And basically at this point, right? Let's Teismuose tai jau tikrai gal, jaučiu šimtas būdų bus įrodyti, kad tas video AI sugeneruotas ar kažką, mes šį kalbam labai be tokius TikTok'ų, žinai, kur tiesiog masė žmonių tu exposing'i contentą, o ne ekspertam, kurie tiesiog tikės be lenku. O ten teismuose dabar, man atrodo, ten yra technologija, kur labai greitai nustatytų, kad čia netikra. Let's imagine a situation where some, you know, terrible people, terrorists, very bad people, you know, I'm not definitely not condoning this act. Imagine if some terrible people would like overtake the Astankina Tower in Russia or something and they would like hijack all the TV signal in Russia and would run a video, deep fake of Putin. At this point, maybe it could be literally anything, you know, you could literally make a deep fake video of Putin asking like Russian men to, uh, you know, go to a nearby store and buy a large and shove it up their ass to fight Nazism in Ukraine or whatever. And people are gonna be like, damn, man. Well, it's the executive order of the president. So I guess we have to do it, you know? What, what am I, not a patriot of Russia that I wanna shove this d up my ass right now? The president said it on TV. <laughs> Oh my god, my country's doomed. <laughs> the world is doomed, as far as that goes, actually. <laughs> so yeah, the point that I'm making, right, is that boomers don't know anything about technology. So this actually brings us to what I want to talk about in this video. So Ne tik boomeriai, by the way, apsutai žmonės labai mažai apie technologiją žino, tam lygiai tiek patys 22 metų bahūrai, kurie NFT tūkstančių sukišė, nei vienas jau nesupranta, kaip NFT veikia, kaip technologija veikia, net nieko nesupranta, nei vienas, ten, nu, ne, ne vienas, bet daugiau nesupranta, net kaip kompas veikia, ten iš vis, kas iš vis darus, tai čia sakymas, kad boomeriai nesupranta jo šiur, bet didžioji daug žmonių nesupranta, nei kaip technologija veikia ir jie pasimauna ant beren kokio feiko, ant beren kokio fake news, kur net AI nesugenerot, net nereikia, tai čia, žinai, mes galim tiesiog visą laiką e, pisprotą, jie iš platomis rinim, jie durni, aš taip pats pratingas, bet taip nėra, statistiškai taip nėra. E, kiek čia pasmečiat, dabar yra 39 žmonės, tai vidutiniškai kalbant, turbūt koksai 20, 20 iš jūs tiesiog Debilai esat, tai vat. O kurie jau jūs atsirinkit, gerai? <laughs> Tie, kurie čia nerašo tie tiesiog, kurie dabar vat neparašysi čia nieko, tai tiesiog viskai debilai. So, visi, like, visi kaitis saugus. I already mentioned in the start of the video, Russia's biggest governmental bank, Sberbank, has created its own AI. This is not an advertisement <laughs> of it, by the way, or anything. I was not paid, so I just want to say this now. Sberbank sucks my dick. Worst bank of all time. <laughs> So they made a text AI called Giga Chat, and they also made a digital art AI thing called Kandinsky. And what happened is that Sergei Mironov, a pretty well-known Russian politician, but you know, translating from uh, propaganda Russian, I would really describe that as uh, a prominent Putin bootlicker, who's like part of the fake opposition, essentially. Just basically pawns that imitate that, you know, their opposition, that they actually disagree with the governments in any way. There's a bunch of these parties like LGPR, KPRF, the Communist Party of Russia, and another prominent one of these parliamentary fake opposition 
Colossus is also just Russia for truth, which this guy, Sergei Mironov, is actually the leader of. And I actually do have a little anecdote to tell about Sergei Mironov. No, I didn't meet him or anything, but uh, actually, I remember when I was a little kid, the 2004 Russian presidential election was going on, and uh, he was running for president then. And basically, there's this show in Russia called Spokoyne Nochi Maloshi, which is like a children's show that you're supposed to watch before bed or whatever. And the host of that show was Aksana Fyodorova, like a Russian model and a TV presenter. Oh, and bless. basically, if you were a kid at that time and you were watching that show, you were in love with that woman. <laughs> and basically, she had an advertisement <laughs> on Russian TV saying that, oh, oh, that Joe, you were in love with that woman. <laughs> And basically, she had an advertisement on Russian TV saying that you should vote for Sergei Mironov. And so when my dad went to vote in 2004 for the presidency, basically, I convinced and I made my dad vote for Sergei Mironov. <laughs> because Aksana Fyodorova from my favorite kids TV show says so. So uh, here we go, guys, you know. <laughs> 19 years ago, I cast a vote for this guy and now I'm clowning on him. I mean, I guess that was one less vote for Putin in 2004, so still pretty good, you know. I did my part. <laughs> but yeah, Sergei Mironov is a horrible person. I don't even think I need to say this, but yes, he's very Z, of course. You know, he's in full support of the denazification of Ukraine. And, you know, you know, a classic member of the Russian parliament or the Russian government in 2023. But essentially what happened is that shortly after these AI uh, from Sberbank came out, Sergei Mironov raised a very important issue of these AI systems not being uh, patriotic enough. Here's this post on Telegram right here. Let me just read it off a little bit. Members of the expert community, which I guess, you know, are like Twitter users or something, have gotten a bunch of materials out of this system, and it turns out that the Kandinsky algorithm forms a deliberately negative image of Russia and a positive image of unfriendly countries. Using the inputs <laughs> Russian, on, uh, me Russia, and Russians, and even Russian flag, not even once was there generated a picture that had the colors of the Russian flag. However, if you input the flag of Ukraine or the flag of America, the pictures created fully coincide with the colors and the design of the flags of the countries aforementioned. So yeah, and this is basically what they're talking about. The prompt is beautiful Russia, and uh, this is what we get essentially uh, beautiful Jesus Russia Christ. in Serbia, <laughs> because this is literally the Serbian flag. Makes sense, because a lot of Russians are leaving to Serbia right now. <laughs> Here we have a... Uh... <laughs> This is the input saying Donbass is Russia and it has a picture of a soldier in front of a ruined city, which is, you know, yes, this is pretty, this is a pretty good uh, representation of what the Russian world brings, I guess. So uh, very unpatriotic of you, AI. How dare you? So here it says by using the prompt Donbass is Russia and I love Donbass, the pictures have a uh, prevalent color in it and those are the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Yeah, guys, I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> it's almost as if AI actually like gets information from like the real world and not like the, you know, fantasy world that you created just to you for yourself <laughs> and here's the best one yet by using the pro <laughs> Um, I am a Z patriot. The AI has created a picture of a creature that looks like a zombie, etc. <laughs> like, this is embarrassing. Like, do you realize that <laughs> the phrase Z patriot is only used? It doesn't stop! <laughs> it just doesn't stop. <laughs> When describing like hey, <laughs> drinking game a garden coma for Vienna video hateful people who have been brainwashed by propaganda. So yes, zombies. So here we have uh, <laughs> the picture attached. I am a Z patriot, that's the prompt. And yeah, here's the picture of a guy going Z. I don't know, like once again, I don't really see anything wrong with this picture personally. <laughs> here's a picture for the prompt Ukraine. It just shows up a, uh, a lady in the colors of the Ukrainian flag and like a tradition. <laughs> Prisimenu, jo, ten, man atrodo, net neplanavo to zero panašiai naudoti, bet jie labai spinino tos simbolius tiesiog į savo pusę ir, ir tiek, ir pasiemėjos ten pradžioje visi klausė, ką jie čia reiškia ir panašiai, bet jo, ne, neaišku, ten gal ir planavo, žinai, kažkas kažkurio lygių, bet, bet jo, pradžioje nenaudojo ir tai tiesiog perėjo. Eating the colors of the Ukrainian flag in like a traditional type of headdress. And here's another one saying Ukrainians and it's basically, you know, a picture of a dignified woman once again with a flag in front of something that looks kind of ruined as well. I wonder why, once again, like, it has to be the meddlings of the evil West. That's just the only opinion I have though. We could guess that during the creation of Kandinsky, unchanged developments made by unfriendly countries might have been used. These countries are running an informational and mental war against our country. You 
well, you know, I'm sorry, but like somebody needs to tell Sergey Mironov that using an iPhone or using Windows or Mac OS or any tech pretty much is using developments of uh, unfriendly countries. So, uh, Sergey, if you're a real patriot, if you want to like actually, you know, be patriotic, you know, like click rocks together or something like <laughs> use the Yalta phone or don't even talk about this. I mean, <laughs> yes, this AI will be using developments made by people in unfriendly countries, just like uh, using the internet in itself is actually using uh, developments made by people in unfriendly countries. So, uh, you know, you could just stop using the internet. I think we'd all, you know, agree that would be a good thing. So uh, <laughs> you're welcome. And the most dangerous thing is that the users of the Kandinsky system could also be school students that are underage. And as a result, they will be forming a negative attitude towards their country. They will not know what the governmental flag of Russia looks like. And they would think <laughs> that Russia is a country that is uh, lagging behind as far as scientific developments. <laughs> it's wow. basically the same level of alarmism saying that, you know, any violent video game causes like any sort of violence, basically. And of course, it's, you know, this anti-patriotic AI that's actually, you know, forming a negative view of Russia, you know, in the minds of the youth right now. It's definitely not Russia destroying their prospects for the future. It's definitely this. And also, like, if this AI gives, like, the wrong colors when you type in Russian flag, kids are not gonna know what the Russian flag looks like. This is fucking nonsense. <laughs> Taking all of this into account, I have sent an official letter to the name of the General Prosecutor of the Russian Federation, Igor Krasnov, regarding checking the, uh, actions of Sberbank, and if the content generated by the algorithm Kandinsky actually, uh, abides the Russian law. <laughs> Imagine thinking that an AI has to like <laughs> This just shows how why? Chatos specifinis editinimas to savo juokus tiesiog terpti tam tikrą mo I aš nežinau. Čia kaip Love Trackas per kokiu serialą. Žinau per kokiu ne serialo, ten kokius, nežinau, arba serialo, jo ten Love Trap Trackas. Tai čia grinai kaip tas veikia out of touch the people run in Russia is and how Russia is just ran by people who barely like who are basically like complete dribblers who don't know anything about anything like <laughs> How more embarrassing can you get, man? Well, guys, as a result of this, Burbank's team behind the AI actually had a response to Sergey. Kandinsky actually did change some of their algorithms and actually did ban certain searches and prompts from their AI. And now it's a little bit different. Let's check it out. So basically, the way the AI was changed is that, first of all, now, if you put in certain spicy terms or prompts, you know, anything that's related to the current situation, essentially, the AI gives you a warning that you're actually uh, breaking the terms of service and you can get banned. So, uh... Ai, tai net, jie net neišsprendė problemus. Aš galvau, gal pakeis kažką, žinai, generaciniam tam lygiai, kad ten, nu, pakoreguos daugiau su šerštant fotkių, su vėliu ir panašiai, nu, kažką taip, bet, tipo, ne, jie atsiog užbana promptus. Only tos. apolitical prompts are allowed. <laughs> and also, apparently, as it turns out, uh, the words Ukraine and Ukrainian were removed from the AI, and basically now, if you type in Ukraine, you get pictures of puppies. And basically, what the AI also does now is that uh, if you use a prompt of any of the cities that Russia basically, you know, annexed or uh, tried to, or, you know, any of the territories where fighting is currently going on, if you actually try to put it in, you also get a notification saying that, you know, you're breaking the terms of use. And also, you get basically just regular pictures of generic cities. Very interesting. I wonder why they did that. It's probably not because when you actually Google those cities now, all you see, all that AI gives you is ruins. And that actually might make certain people think. So, uh, also what Kandinsky did is they basically removed the prompts that are related to the special military operation in any way. So once again, if you put in special military operation, you get pictures of flowers and the most important thing that Kandinsky changed you know basically to not shatter uh, Sergei Mironov's hearts is uh, changing the result for Z Patriot before that you got a zombie and now when you put in Z Patriot first of all you get, <laughs> you get a picture of a giga chat standing with a Z on his on his shirt in front of New York I guess and we also have this right here some sort of samurai Z guy it's actually packet you keep no Request does not comply, of course, Z Patriot once again, which I guess, you know, is great because now when uh, Sergei Mironov types in Z Patriot into the Kandinsky AI, he no longer has to look in the mirror. Now, actually, I wanted to try it for myself. Once again, not an advertisement, fuck Sberbank and fuck this AI, but uh, I'll still use it. <laughs> Let me type in special military operation. <laughs> there we go, guys. I got a... I got a picture of a. <laughs> I got a picture of some chamomiles, and it also said that uh, yeah, search does not comply with the terms of use. Let me type in uh, Donbass is Russia. The only situation I would ever type these words, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Ah, to him, you're right, boy. I guess to him, you're right, boy. I'm pretty close. By the way. <laughs> 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 
Jel, zdi še, kaj so pentu pati snupeše. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Well, guys, I guess we could all sleep tight now, knowing that the threats yeah, of the Nova, the terrible uh, chat GPT variants of our youth through uh, AI, Damn. the threat is now gone because thankfully it's so Sergei Mirov no, well, managed to eradicate all the threats AI now. Gen- uh, this is all that we've been waiting for, and now it's here. <laughs> oh my god, man, I'm just so, so sad about the fate of my country. Anyways, guys, yeah, what can I say? Uh, we talked about how Russian boomers and boomers in general just don't know anything about technology. We talked about everything. I hope you guys enjoy this video if you guys did then- <laughs> okay